y'all welcome back to my channel bethany brings books it has been a minute since i've been on here if you follow me on instagram you probably have seen that i am um, i have moved so i have moved into an apartment and i am so far loving it y'all it is it's it's amazing how God worked everything out for me and I'm gonna try to do another video sharing more about that and maybe doing an apartment tour hopefully in the next week or two. But it's been so long since I've been on here and I had another video filmed that I just have not uploaded, so it was a tag that I'm probably gonna end up refilming. <laughs> um but I wanted to come on tonight uh we had, we had church and it's already kind of late so i'm going to try to go pretty quickly but i wanted to come on here and just talk about the books that i read in the month of september um i'm really hoping once i completely get moved in get my rv sold that i can get on a schedule with my filming um because i really want to i really want to keep filming and um you know keep interacting with everyone and i would like to have me a schedule where i can do it regularly so anyway with that being said um i read i think about seven books in september um eight if you count i finished up my bible study my galatians bible study so um anyway i don't have all of them on hand Okay, Gidget, you can get out of the way. She's just coming up here sitting in front of my camera. <laughs> I don't have all of them on hand, um, so I'm going to try to remember everything, and I'll try to put pictures on the screen. Um, the first book that I read was called In Aunt Lucy's Kitchen, The Cobble Street Cousins. Um, it was a super cute little book about these three girls who go stay with their aunt in the summertime. Or they may be staying with their aunt while their parents are traveling or something. Anyway, they're staying with their aunt for like an extended period of time and they decide to start their own little business. Super cute, fun book. It's like a really, a really young age level and it just, it was, it was so cute. I would, I think there's, I think it's like a little series and I thought it was a really fun book. I think it would be a good chapter book to start, like reading chapter books to my kids because it had illustrations in it and stuff. Are you saying hey? <laughs> I love you, boy. Um, and I gave it four stars on Goodreads. So then I read The Hound of the Baskervilles, and this was so good, y'all. Um, Stacy from, I think her channel is Christian Reason Classics, I think is what her channel name is. Um, she recommended this to me on Instagram for a good fall read. I was asking for recommendations. I think I've read at least a couple of books of Sherlock Holmes um, stories. I believe I did a study in Scarlet and maybe one with um, like a multiple short stories. And But this one is, it's one story and Sherlock, um, gets this visit I'm trying to remember exactly because i don't have it on hand but sherlock gets this visit he gets a visit from someone who tells him the story about this estate and um this home where there's like this legend uh that there's a hound that runs loose on the moors and there's like this family that one of their ancestors was really wicked and um one day I see you bud like they there's a legend that he was killed by this evil <laughs> there's a legend that he was killed by this like so it's so called evil give me a kiss We gotta go nine night. I hit my bed, okay. This hound like chased him down on the moor and killed him. Like this big abnormally large evil looking hound. And I think that's what it is. 
a, fa a friend of the family or either the doctor, I can't remember which one it is, comes to visit Sherlock and like he shares the story with him and he tells him about how just recently another f member of the family has died and he feels like that there's like suspicion surrounding the death um, of the family member. And so anyway, Watson ends up going out to the moor and like staying at his home and investigating for Sherlock. Sherlock said he has some things that he has to take care of. So he sends Watson out to investigate this story about the hound because like the legend has taken place over like a hundred or two hundred, several hundred years. And there's like been a recent death that um, he sends, he wants to go investigate. So it was very good. I gave it five stars. It was the perfect fall read, like the perfect book to kickstart my fall reading. It was atmospheric. It was um, just all the fall vibes and like it was so good it was just i enjoyed it so much so glad stacy recommended it thank you stacy if you watched this video thank you for recommending it and i loved it and it makes me want to read more sherlock um that one it was just really good i liked it so much then i read book one in the black art chronicles this is a um I would say middle grade, maybe 10 and up. Um, it is a series, if you've ever listened to Adventures in Odyssey, this series, it tells like the extended version of the story of the Black Art Chronicles, which is this series um, of episodes on the audio show Adventures in Odyssey of, it's like this series of episodes that follows a specific event happening in Odyssey um, where this, like a villain named Regis Blackguard comes to town and um, he just kind of uh, wreaks havoc in the town of Odyssey. And so this is it's a little chapter book. It's called Opening Moves. I think there's four or five books in this series and it basically just expands on the audio story and tells more of the story of what happened. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, being if you've if you've listened to this show I would definitely listen to the show first if you've listened to it then I think you would definitely enjoy this um I really enjoyed it and I look forward to finishing the series um I think I just it was fun getting to see like read about to read about um some of the some of the, just kind of expand on the story and see some of the inside some of the characters' heads and some of the other circumstances that were going on. And um, it was, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I want to read the rest in the series. Um, so I actually read two ebooks this month, which was definitely a, uh, what would I say, a, first for me I have just started getting into ebooks but it was really helpful for me over the past month with um, with moving and at times when I'm maybe trying to get my little uh, my youngest to sleep I can I have my kid my um, iPad or my phone I have my Kindle reader on it and I can just pick it up and read uh, if I don't have a book nearby so I really like to check out books that are free or um, there's there's several different pages I follow on social media that will give list of free books and so I will I will go and download like free and cheap books just to have and so anyway I had um, downloaded one by Nicole Dees called um, A Season to Love this is one of her older series where she was independently published and, uh, or it may have just been like a smaller publishing house. But anyway, that being said, this was my first book by Nicole Deeks and I enjoyed it so much. It was actually the second in a series. Um, I think the series is called Love and Linux. I think I enjoyed her writing style so much. She just, her characters had a lot of depth and 
growth, like, uh, you, you see them grow, you know, they're not just, I don't know, it just felt very, her characters feel very believable, realistic, and you see the growth in them, but anyway, the story follows a woman named Willa who, um, lost her husband several years before the book uh, starts, and she, she lost her husband, like, I think she was married several years and then lost her husband. She was a young widow. And she also has a little girl who is like six or seven who has just um, come through treatment for cancer. And so she, because of these circumstances, she deals with a lot of fear in her life and fear of loss and especially fear of losing her daughter because of well, also her husband and also her daughter's sickness. As her daughter is able to finally go back to school following her cancer treatment, um, Willa is really struggling with this. And so she has to take her daughter to the local um, physician. And the older doctor who's usually working is out of the country and his son is filling in for him. And his son's name is Patrick. And he is a young doctor who uh, practices medicine um, like all over the world kind of he does a lot of mission trips and things like that and so he's adventurous and if, um, like just he's op the opposite of her and so we see he kind of they get to know each other in like several different circumstances and so he kind of challenges her to um, to a to open herself up to like new experiences and, and let go of her fears and it was just really interesting watching their relationship and how he he realizes early on that she has her issues with fear and just the things that she's dealing with and so he tr is trying to encourage her to get past that and so he get he begins to give her this um give her these like this list of um, basically like challenge her to um, push herself and step out of her comfort zone and so just watching their relationship develop was it was sweet he was such a sweet character um just he was one of those male leads that is just super sweet and um, he cared so much about Willow, like you could see it in just the way he treated her and the way he really wanted to push her to go beyond herself and get past her fears and I, I loved it so much. It was just, I related to some of the stuff with her being a young widow and her dealing with the fear of loss and of, of, of going through that again. Be sleepy. It was, I enjoyed it. I, I really uh, want to read the rest of the series and I really enjoyed it. Um, I gave it f five stars on Goodreads, I believe it was five stars. Then I read, let's see what else did I read. Um, I read this book by Jody Hedlund, um, Enamored. This is book one in the Knights of Brethren series. So, uh, this Jody Hedlund has a lot of, she writes for like, um, a mainstream publishing house, but then she also independently publishes a lot of, um, YA, like, uh, medieval stories and fairy tales retellings. And so this is, this series is based on the Knights of the Round Table, I think. I believe is what it is. The real story of Excalibur is what it says at the bottom. Um, so we have this, it's set in like a fictional country. We follow this um, girl whose mother and sister disappeared years ago and she was taken in by her uncle and his wife and her uncle um, becomes her sister was the heir to the throne, I think, but because of their disappearance, her uncle became the king. And so, um, in this book, we see her. She's about to turn 18, 
and she has to choose a husband. So there's like this rule where when she turns 18, there's a week-long courtship thing where they do all these games and um, they kind of got like all these knots show off for the show off for her and she has to decide which one she feels like she wants to marry and so this is going on and she really doesn't feel like there's any of them that she wants to marry and she's trying to figure out what she's supposed to do and so while this is going on one of her childhood friends comes back who he was kind of raised up with her until he was about 10 years old um, his father was a sage, which is like, kind of like one of the wise advisors to the king. And uh, at 10, he was sent away and he suddenly comes back at the request of his father. And so, um, she begins to, um, like develop their friendship again. The king ends up having to go out to battle and so she finds out that there's someone trying to kill the king and so she um, goes on a journey to get the new, get the word to the king that someone is trying to kill him and Maxim, I think is the name of her friend, he um, realizes that she is also in danger and he needs to follow her. And so. They end up on a journey together to get to the king, and it's it's kind of that story. It is a continuing story, so um, there are things that are unresolved at the end of this that the next book will follow. And um, anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. It's late. My mind is like my brain. I have brain fog. It's been a little while since I've read it, so I hope that makes sense. But anyway, um. Yeah, so I I couldn't decide what to rate this on Goodreads. It is YA, and so I felt like it was a little bit, um, I, I think I could definitely tell that, that it was YA, so I wasn't really sure how to rate it. Um, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it, and at first I was kind of like not too sure how much I was going to like it because it was a little bit more simple. Um, writing style and just storyline but I really did enjoy it for what it was um, I ordered the second one because I definitely want to finish reading the series I feel like it had a little bit of fantasy elements to it because there's like these flying creatures that can breathe um, fire like can breathe and like when they breathe it can cause like combustion and fire it's and a dragon. It's a dragon. Oh. And then also, like, some of the humans can kind of communicate with them a little bit. So there were some elements to it that I felt like were bordering on uh, a little bit of fantasy. Although it may, I don't know. I don't know if that should be considered fairy tale. I'm not sure. But anyway. Anyway, it was good. And I did enjoy it. And I am ready to read the second one. So I buddy read The Mermaid in the Basement with Holly from Lovely Daily Holly Daddy, and Celestria. Daddy. Um, Daddy. And this was my first time ever buddy reading a book. So it was really fun for me. I loved it so much. Um, I just had so much fun. I missed talking to Holly and Celestria about this book. Um, I had so much fun doing a buddy read. Um, so this is the first book in the Lady Trent mystery series. This is by Gilbert Morris. He He's passed away now, but he published so many books. Um, this was one of his later series. I think this was published in like 2007. Uh, and it's kind of like a little Sherlock-y feel to it. Um, it's about a woman who her brother is accused of murdering uh, someone in the theater and she immediately tries to figure out what really happened because she believes she's like no my brother did not do this um, she is an atheist and her father is an atheist and so we see kind of um, we see that journey throughout the book uh, it does not 
uh, it is a series, so everything does not resolve in the first book as far as the faith elements. But that is like, that was a unique aspect, the fact that she was an atheist and she was kind of like, um, we see her questioning, beginning to question things about faith. And um, anyway, in her search for finding out what really happened in her brother's situation, she meets an actor from the theater who knew the the other um, person who was murdered. And so he feels like God has told him to help her figure out a way to help her brother because he, he doesn't believe that her brother is guilty either. And so they begin this journey together. She gets him kind of like as a private investigator to help her figure out what happened, what really happened. Um, like I said, it has definitely has some Sherlock vibes to it. Um, there were some elements to the mystery that I felt like were a little bit, I don't want to say simple, but I mean, there were, it wasn't super complex, I guess the mystery wasn't, um, and just like her investigating it, but I did, um, I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. Um, I think Celestria and Holly enjoyed it a bit more than I did. Um, and I enjoyed it. I was, I'm glad I read it. I want to read the rest of the series. But I feel like just compared to some of the other things that I've read by Gilbert Morris, this one was uh, less developed. I feel like the storyline was less developed. The characters were not as, didn't have as much depth to them. And just the overall storyline felt, I don't know, I'm used to some of the other things I've read by him. He had a lot more aspects to the story so that was that was that was why I only gave it three stars um it just felt a little bit more simple than some of his other books but like I said I did enjoy it and I would like to can I'm, I'm definitely planning to continue reading the series I think we are going to buddy read the rest of the series together at some point um, which i really look forward to i will say if you've never read gilbert morris his books are full of faith content um he can he was a preacher and so that being said he can come across as kind of preachy which i don't mind in my books um because i mean i like to read christian fiction for the christian element um, so I don't mind that. I know some people like don't really like that in books. He definitely has a lot of faith elements in his stories because I, I forgot to mention the actor that she, um, that goes to her to help her is a Christian. And so he, we see very much the, um, his faith at play in this story. And like I said, Gilbert Morris, he definitely very clearly like states um elements of the gospel and um just he's not subtle at all when it comes to the religious the um, christian aspect of his books which um it's good and he does he does it really well and so that was just something that i thought i would mention um but yeah i I want to read the rest. I also finished up my study on Galatians. I think I'm going to do a separate video talking about this. I enjoyed this so much. Um, it is a six week study and I really enjoyed it. It, it just is impacting my life so much and I really want to, um, I want to do a separate video talking about this, just trying to collect my thoughts and discuss this. The last book that I read was Laurel's Dream by Pepper Basham. And this book, y'all, it was so good. So I've I, I, I've read um, Pepper Basham. I read another book by her and I really enjoyed it. And I had seen this series and, uh, or I'd seen this book and I really wasn't sure what I was gonna think about it. Um, but I found it for free on Kindle, and so I downloaded it. And so um, one night I was just trying to find something to read on my phone while I was I was like doing something, and 
um, I didn't have a book around so I picked it up I was like well, I'm gonna just try this one but, um, but I really wasn't sure so it set in the Blue Ridge Mountains and in the early 1900s like during World War one and um I really wasn't didn't think I was gonna be in the mood for that time period really and for like that that um just that subgenre or whatever but or that era but oh my goodness it was so good y'all I enjoyed it so much it was set in the Blue Ridge Mountains and so I knew like and I follow Pepper also on Instagram and she lives she lives in the mountains here in my home state and so there's so many elements and things that I know where she's talking about when she um, puts them in her stories and so I could visualize the scenery and everything really good but she just brought to life these characters she she endeared them to me in such a way like they were so endearing and um she opened my eyes just to the just to the elements of um, Appalachian culture that I have not you know seen and I thought I knew pretty well Appalachian culture and like the mountain people um I just I thought I knew a lot about it but she just made me even more aware of it it definitely has very much Christie vibes if you've ever read the book Christie by Catherine Marshall it reminded me of that a lot but it was just it was good um we have this young man named Jonathan Taylor I think he comes over from England to the mountains of uh, to the Blue Ridge Mountains and he he comes over um, because he was sent home from the war due to him having a bad leg and so he can't fight so he decides to he has like had medical training and um, he wants to be a doctor so he kind of wants to get away from his father his father is just kind of very much down on him because of him not really living up to his expectations and so he decides to come join his uncle in America and um, stay there for a while and he comes to teach but at the same time he also uh, is able to use some of his skills of, as a doctor at times so he meets uh, as he's there he meets this young lady named Laurel who lives in the mountains and um, we she kind of she also has a love of teaching she has, she wants to go to college she has like a dream of going to college and coming back to the mountains to teach her people and so he he um she ends up opening up to him and sharing this with him and so he begins to kind of work with her in this area and then they just they work with the mountain people we see him overcoming some of the bias that is directed toward him and as he goes through that and we see it's just so many adventures that happen and watching him be introduced to like things that he's never seen or experienced before and um, seeing just the various cultural aspects of the mountain people it was just I enjoy it so much um and Pepper I don't know she just she writes in a way that's it's very readable so you can read it's like they, her books are are quick reads but at the same time they're not boring she always has like a twist to the story and um I don't know they're just I and I just enjoyed it. her characters I, I really love her characters and her storytelling style and um man it was it was really good I gave it five stars and it, it was one of those books that I was just like I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed it and I'm actually already she had a she has a sequel to it that I'm already reading and enjoying so much um, so yeah that's what I read in September and I'm gonna try to go ahead and wrap this up um thank y'all for watching I'm sorry for the quality of this video for the for random the randomness anything crazy about it um but this is what I'm working with right now until I get completely settled. So anyway, 
Thank y'all for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.